Right. So you okay. can do that even if you start on the starting line with a tricord. I think that's an important thing a lot of pilots kind of, and including myself up until recently, don't realize is that you can tricord literally any time. And especially in, in situations like combat, you know, when we're talking about milliseconds making the difference, it's important to keep in mind that in zero G or any place where there's no atmospheric resistance, your first priority in all situations is to always try to maneuver as quickly as possible. And the way to do that in zero G is to tricord always. When you're out maneuvering a foe, when you're escaping a foe, when you're trying to go from any A to B as quickly as possible, you're doing so with tricording. And tricording, for everyone who's unfamiliar with the lay term here, we're talking about uh, what's also called a combined turn. Uh, and that is using your strafing thrusters, your forward thrusters, and your up thrusters all simultaneously in order to execute a maneuver. So in the case of myself, using hands on stick and stick, my left stick is all translation, that means moving the ship. I am full deflection forward, to the right or left, and up. So you can see all three of my green bars there and my on-screen overlay are maxed right now. That gives you your absolute fastest way to get anywhere. Even if you're going in a straight line, angle your ship, go to where your projected tricord TVI is going to be and do it that way. You will shave off seconds, you know, of your time in every situation. The key to mastering zero G flight is understanding that you can do that any time. It just takes practice. You have to get used to the concept that forward doesn't matter when you're in space at all. Completely different story once we're down in atmosphere, but up here, you should be aiming with the tricord angle of your ship. Whatever that may be, depending on the ship. Different ships have different thruster strengths and different angles. Left, right, you know, up, down. Um, in the case of my ship, it's, you know, right about there or so. Then you're going to angle your ship to move that TVI where it needs to be. Notice how quickly I'm blacking out there. Quickly hitting 18 Gs without even using boost. So off the starting line even, you want to try to angle your ship so that when you hit the tricord that you desire, whether it's left or right, your vector will be where you want to go. Um, so that's that's the first principle. I have three major principles here about zero-g flight, and that's number one, and that is always tricord, always. Um, whenever you can, um, even while keeping pips on target, even while mitigating g-forces, you can tricord. Will it always happen? Of course not. Will you be yawing into turns sometimes? Will you be retro-thrusting to mitigate vector control and g's? Yes. But the more you're able to constantly use tricords into your turn, the faster you will be. So that is my first principle we'll talk about today. Um, second principle is the fastest way to stop your ship. And a lot of people are, are guilty of simply like letting go of their decoupled switch and going into coupled, or hitting the space break button, or just using your retros. And that is incorrect. Uh, how you want to control your vector and stop yourself if necessary is actually tricording in the opposite direction. So best way to do that, if you have the G budget to do that, if the G force budget in your head is, is good enough, is to simply rotate the ship and tricord in an up tricord in the opposite direction. But you can always down tricord too to mitigate Gs. Point here is, um, in order to control your ship the fastest, the best way to do it is always manually. So, and that brings us to our third point, and this is obvious for a lot of pilots, but for some it's not. Decoupled at all times. You must be decoupled to unlock the full acceleration potential of your ship. Coupled only limits you due to limitations with the flight model. So that's my three big principles of racing and how uh, using these principles and measuring yourself against people who do it as well, seeing where your times end up are ways to improve that. Once you get that down, it becomes second nature, it becomes automatic. And that's one less thing you have to think about when you're worrying about tactics, or combat, or anything else is that you will automatically try to maneuver your ship in zero G for max performance acceleration using combined turns and uh, oversteering. Any questions?